Good morning, everybody. Um, hi, my name is Dave Shepard. I'm from the Swedish Cancer Institute in Seattle. I'll be co-chairing the session with uh, Richard Popple from University of Alabama, Birmingham. And this is the session on volumetric modulated arc therapy. So just as a disclaimer, uh, we've had a grant from Electa on the topic of VMAT. So as an outline for the session this morning, I'm going to start off by talking about the VMAT, the basics of VMAT, VMAT plan quality, uh, how you go about commissioning a VMAT delivery system, and the commercial VMAT solutions. Then I'll turn it over to Richard, who will talk about VMAT patient-specific quality assurance, advanced VMAT delivery techniques, and how to go about starting a VMAT program. So there have been a number of, you know, the, I guess the idea of rotational IMRT has been around for a number of years. And so it kind of uh, struck me when I looked at, you know, Rock's initial paper on tomotherapy, which was entitled Tomotherapy, a New Concept for the Delivery of Dynamic Conformal Radiotherapy. And it, it's interesting that it's, it's really been 20 years since this uh, original paper was published. So a couple years after Rock published on the, the concept of tomotherapy, uh, Cedric Yu published a paper entitled Intensity Modulated Arc Therapy with Dynamic Multi-Leaf Collimation, an Alternative to Tomotherapy. <clears throat> and the basic message uh, that Cedric gave in this paper was that you don't necessarily need a new treatment machine or a new binary multi-leaf collimator. You can deliver rotational IMRT on a conventional uh, linear accelerator with a conventional multi-leaf collimator. And this is a film from the um, paper that Cedric wrote. And, you know, in, in today's day and age, this doesn't look particularly impressive. But back in 1995, to be able to deliver a C-shaped uh, dose distribution with sparing the sensitive structure and the concavity of the C was actually quite impressive. So another key paper in the idea of rotational IMRT is this paper by Carl Otto, uh, published in uh, 2007, entitled Volumetric Modulated Arc Therapy, IMRT in a Single Gantry Arc. And the basic premise of this paper was the idea of, you know, you don't necessarily need to deliver multiple overlapping arcs, that if you put enough shapes within an individual arc, you can also, you know, deliver very uh, conformal rotational IMRT. And to distinguish this versus multi-arc approach, uh, Carl used the term volumetric modulated arc therapy versus Cedric's uh, term of intensity modulated arc therapy. I think in the literature nowadays, those two terms are pretty interchangeable, and they've been sort of mixed and matched. I guess I sort of prefer the historic term of IMAT, but I think more generally people use the term VMAT. And so I think in, in the rest of this talk, I probably bounce back and forth between the two terms. So the basics of IMAT or VMAT, it's an arc-based approach to IMRT that can be delivered on a conventional linear accelerator with a conventional multi-leaf collimator. And during each arc, the leaves of the MLC move continuously as the gantry rotates. And the degree of intensity modulation is related to the number of beam shapes per arc and the number of arcs. So... If you talk about rotational IMRT, I think you can kind of separate it. I was talking about it's been 20 years. It's kind of two decades uh, here. And so if you look at the first decade, you know, the first commercial solution was serial tomotherapy. And this was available through NOMOS. And NOMOS had a, a solution called the NOMOS Peacock Binary Multi-Leaf Collimator. And you combine that with the Corvus Inverse Planning System. And that was the first commercial IMRT solution. And for the first number of years that people were delivering IMRT, this was the most uh, widely used uh, commercial IMRT solution. Uh, the next was introduced as helical tomotherapy, and this was introduced by Tomotherapy, Inc., um, and they called it the high art system, uh, with the first patients treated in 2002 at the University of Wisconsin, and more recently, you know, Accurate purchased tomotherapy. Uh, and then the IMAT, VMAT technique, uh, th this largely withered on the vine, during that first decade of rotational IMRT. There's a couple of reasons why um, this did wither on the vine. The first is that uh, LENAC manufacturers did not have control systems capable of delivering IMAT. And also there were no robust inverse planning tools for IMAT. So during this time that IMAT was sort of languishing, you know, there was ongoing research uh, that was happening. So for example, you know, I was at the University of Maryland uh, working with Cedric Yu, and we did a phase one 
clinical trial under IRB protocol where we treated patients with uh, 50 patients with IMAT. Um, but we had some really key limitations that prevented us from taking full advantage of the IMAT delivery technique. You know, one is that the, the linear accelerator couldn't vary the dose rate, so we had a constant dose rate during rotation. And the other is that there was no robust inverse planning tool. So this is sort of IMAT light. Um, so as an example of the kind of things we would do, uh, this is a prostate case. We use two sets of bilateral arcs with one set of arcs matching the beam's eye view of the prostate and one matching the beam's eye view of the prostate minus the rectum, and then we optimized the weights of the individual arcs. So this is a screen capture from, I guess it's called Render Plan at the time, the Electus old planning system, and the purple here is the 95% isodose cloud, and the red is the target, which is a little hard to see. But you get a very conformal dose, and you're able to sort of curve around the rectum. We actually included wedges in this plan, too. Um, this is another case, a spinal appendomoma case. Uh, and here's the target here, and this is sort of the verification film, and it kind of illustrates you can get, you know, even with this simple approach to IMAT, you know, very conformal dose distributions. So one of the key challenges, and one of the reasons that, again, IMAT sort of withered on the vine was the lack of robust inverse planning tools. And the critical thing is that you need to account for the interconnectedness of the beam shapes within each arc. And this actually proves to be mathematically quite challenging, and it's one of the reasons it took some time for there to be robust inverse planning tools. So what does this mean, this interconnectedness of the beam shapes? So as you rotate through an arc, each shape within the arc is connected to the shape before it and connected to the shape after it. And so there are limitations on how fast the leaves can move and so forth. So you don't want to make dramatic changes as you move from one beam angle to the next. So one of the, the reasons not to do this is because of machine limitations. Uh, the other is you, if you make too dramatic of changes from one angle to the next in your beam shapes, you're going to find that the complexity increases to the point you may have a hard time getting your plans to verify well. So again, at the University of Maryland, we developed two different approaches to IM or IMAT inverse planning. Uh, one was called direct aperture optimization, and this directly optimizes the aperture shapes and weights throughout each arc. And this kind of approach is what's in pretty much most of the commercial um, VMAT solutions today. And then we also developed an arc sequencing algorithm, and this is kind of using the more traditional IMRT inverse planning approach where you do optimized fluence maps for each beam direction, and then you use a sequencing algorithm to convert the fluence maps into deliverable arcs. And this is similar to the approach that's used in the Monaco uh, planning system. So, you know, things really changed in terms of IMAT and VMAT back in uh, 2008. In 2008, Electa and Varian introduced control systems for their linear accelerators that are capable of delivering VMAT. Uh, the key innovation was that the dose rate, the gantry speed, and the MLC leaf positions could be changed dynamically during rotational delivery. And this is when Carl Otto's paper was, uh, was published and the term VMAT was coined to differentiate this idea of single arc uh, rotational IMRT. So when VMAT was first sort of rolling out clinically, we wanted to do comparisons between, you know, VMAT or rotational IMRT on a conventional linear accelerator with what we were considering the gold standard of rotational IMRT, which is tomotherapy. So we did a collaborative study with the University of Virginia where we took uh, six prostate cases, six head and neck cases, and six lung cases. And we compared fixed field IMRT, uh, VMAT, and tomotherapy in terms of plant quality, delivery time, and delivery accuracy. So this is just a sample case, a head and neck case. We have uh, sort of the red and the blue here represent two different targets, two different prescription levels. On the left is the helical tomotherapy plan. On the right is a two arc plan. And generally these are pretty comparable uh, plans. If we look at the DVH, you know, they're very similar. You know, you, it's hard to tell the difference between the VMAT and the tomotherapy plan. This is a more complex head and neck case. This is four prescription levels. So it's a, you know, a complicated case, which represents a real challenge uh, for VMAT. Tomotherapy has the advantage that there's not this interconnectedness of the beam shapes. Uh, with, with VMAT, because each shape is connected one to the next, it may be harder to get the same degree of modulation. 
But so I think this it was this kind of case that impressed us that we saw, wow, wow with VMAT, we really can get tomotherapy-like uh, plant quality. In this case, let's see, the VMAT is the solid, so it's a little bit more uniform on the target, but a little, you know, not quite as good in terms of sparing, but generally, you know, very equivalent uh, plant quality. So the next uh, three slides will kind of summarize the results. There's kind of too much information here maybe to process. The basic point is that, you know, we looked at all the different dosimetric parameters and compared uh, fixed field IMRT, VMAT, and helical tomotherapy. And the thing is, they're all very similar in terms of plant quality. If you have a nine field, say, IMRT or a VMAT, helical tomotherapy, you know, if you're, if you're using your planning system well, they all should be really quite similar. The only thing that really came out as statistically significant was the differences in delivery time. And this is kind of a story we saw for each different disease site. This is for lung cases. You know, IMRT took 7.9 minutes of beam delivery time. Uh, helical tomotherapy came in second at 5.4, and then VMAT was the most efficient at 2.1 minutes. You know, prostate cases, again, similar story, you know, eight minutes for IMRT, four minutes for helical tomotherapy, and 2.2 minutes for VMAT. And then head and neck cases, again, 11 minutes versus seven versus 4.6. So VMAT, you know, the key, one of the key advantages here was the efficiency of VMAT. And the efficiency, you know, comes from the rotational nature of it and the fact you're not really beaming on and beaming off. It's a continuous delivery. So there have been some developments with tomotherapy as well. Uh, with the tomotherapy high art system, the jaws and the couch speed have historically been set to constant values uh, for each plan. And there's a new option that's now available uh, with dynamic uh, jaw motion and dynamic couch motion that results in improved plan quality and improved delivery efficiency. Uh, the first system in the world was installed at the University of Heidelberg in March of this year. Um, actually, we're starting the installation of this upgrade on our tomotherapy system this Friday, so hopefully that will go well. Um, and this is just a, a, you know, one of the early cases that came out of Heidelberg just to illustrate you know, the capabilities uh, of the new tomotherapy with dynamic jaws. And so this, you can see this is you know, a long, complex esophageal case here. Um, 1.8 gray, and you can see the beam on time now is only is down to 3.6 minutes using dynamic jaws. So this is the summary from the first 72 patients at Heidelberg. Um, their average beam on time is less than five minutes. Uh, so they're treating 60 patients in a 12-hour treatment day. Uh, so this is, I think, now with the dynamic jaws, you've moved really to tomotherapy into that sort of similar. Um, delivery efficiency is what you would see with a conventional linear accelerator, uh, here getting in five patients per hour. Um, prostate cases taking two to three minutes, head and neck three to four, and pelvic cases taking six to seven minutes, and that's just for the delivery portion. So this is a case from uh, a center in France that was, I think, the second case to get the new tomotherapy upgrade. Um, this is a bilateral breast, you know, complex case here with uh, and two integrated boosts and so forth. So this is a complex, long, difficult case, uh, and the delivery time now is reduced to five minutes. So I think that, you know, the, a big advantage of VMAT versus tomotherapy has been the advantage of efficiency for VMAT, but I think that um, that gap has been, you know, largely uh, closed. So how do you go about commissioning uh, a VMAT system? So VMAT commissioning and routine quality assurance builds upon your existing IMRT beam models and your fixed field IMRT QA program. Uh, during VMAT, the MLC leaves are moving and the gantry is rotating and the dose rate is changing. And the dynamic nature of the delivery must be accounted for in your quality assurance. So at least to my knowledge, there's still no AAPM guidance document that's been produced and there's not a general consensus on the tests that must be performed as part of the commissioning of a VMAT system. The most commonly referenced document is a paper from Cliff Ling and his colleagues at Memorial Sloan Kettering. So this is that paper. It's entitled uh, Commissioning and Quality Assurance of a Rapid Arc uh, Radiotherapy System. So there are some you know, basic tests here um, that are recommended. Uh, these are slides from Richard. Uh, the first is t testing the accuracy of the dy dynamic multi-leaf collimator uh, motion positioning during VMAP. So here, what's done, this is a picket fence pattern that's been delivered um, with a rotating gantry. In the, this case, the film uh, was mounted in the blocking tray, 
and the results are compared to a picket fence delivered in the stationary mode. So ideally, if your system's performing well, you're going to see you know, the same picket fence, regardless if it's delivered stationary or in a rotational manner. So the second test is, the, is testing the ability to vary the dose rate and gantry speed during VMAT. So here you can see on this film there's a series of strips that have been delivered. Uh, and each strip on the film is irradiated to the same monitor units using varying combinations of dose rate and gantry rotation speed. And you can see here, you know, this table sort of summarizes the results, but you can see, you know, there's, uh, you know, a strong uniformity here between the various strips. Uh, the third test is testing the ability to accurately vary the multi-leaf collimator speed during VMAT. Uh, here, different parts of the film, which you can see, you know, like here, these different valleys here, um, are exposed to the same dose using the DMLC sliding window technique, combining different leaf speeds with different dose rates to achieve a design dose pattern. And again, here you can see this you know, uniformity of the mean values. Um, so, of course, in the end, what matters is being able to do end-to-end -end tests um, and verifying that the complete delivery is accurate. Uh, and so this is a coronal view of a prostate verification, and you can see the close match between the planned and delivered isodose distributions. Another test that you should definitely perform is the impact of interrupting the delivery. So this can happen. You're delivering an arc, and the beam cuts off. So it's a nice test to try cutting off a beam a series of times uh, during the delivery and see if, if it, that has any impact on the accuracy of the delivered dose. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some treatment planning considerations for VMAT. So ideally, beams that are well modeled for fixed field IMRT may not need to be remodeled for VMAT. That's critical, however, to verify the accuracy of your beam models through extensive measurements. So again, hopefully if things are well modeled, you don't need to go through a remodeling process, but you have to test and verify that. So there are now a number of commercial VMAT solutions out there. All the major vendors, you know, of course, are now going to support uh, VMAT delivery. So, you know, varying, you have Eclipse, Philips has their Pinnacle SmartArc solution, Electa's got their Monaco VMAT solution, uh, Nucletron, which is also now part of Electa, has the Uncentra Master Plan VMAT. Uh, Prowess and Siemens offer the Prowess Panther system. And Raysearch has their Ray Station. So the VMAT planning process uh, is just very similar to that for fixed field IMRT. Uh, there are some additional VMAT specific parameters that may need to be selected. And you know, I'm just going to run through an examples in Pinnacle. So in Pinnacle, you have to select the number of arcs, the allowable delivery time per arc, and the maximum leaf speed. So this is an important question. You know, again, Carl Otto's paper was, was advocating this idea of single arc delivery, and there, but there are some cases where you might, may find an advantage to adding a second arc. So here in Pinnacle, you have the ability to select you know, one arc or a two arc delivery. And so you know, when we first got this system, we tried on a variety of cases, trying one arc, two arcs, three arcs, so forth. Um, and this is just showing, you know, a head and neck case, three different prescription levels indicated by the red, the blue, and the green. And it may be tricky to see this, but the, um, here, you know, you can see that this is more conformal here. We went, this is kind of spilling into here, and it's just more conformal. Adding the second arc just gives us that little bit of additional advantage in terms of uh, plant quality. So this is just a coronal view, of the, and we see the same kind of thing here. We're getting a more uniform dose and just... Uh, and better plant quality when we add the second arc in. Uh, here's the, uh, the DVH, and you can see, again, the second arc is getting us a more uniform uh, target dose and a little bit better plant quality. So one of the interesting things here is that, you know, you would think, okay, if I, if I put two arcs, it's going to take twice as long as a single arc. At least for pinnacle plants, that's not the case um, because you can basically use fewer shapes per arc using multiple arcs. And so, you know, that's going to that's be sort of the balance is are you better off packing a lot of shapes in one arc or doing maybe fewer shapes spread out over multiple arcs. Um, but anyway, so here you, know, you go from a two-minute delivery to a three-minute delivery. And it, for the improvement in quality here, that extra minute is, is, I would say, worth it. So in Pinnacle, you have this ability to specify here the maximum delivery time uh, for the arc. And this is not really a perfect, you know, this is just a, their best prediction of how long it's going to take. And essentially, this is just a way to balance 
plan quality and delivery efficiency. If you chose to, you can kind of push the arc to deliver very fast, but you might lose something in terms of your plan quality. So, you know, when we first got the system, before we went clinical, we tried all these different parameters, tried playing with them and seeing what the impact was on plan quality. So here, this delivery time, you know, we tried 240 seconds per arc, 180 seconds, 90 seconds, 60 seconds. And there's a breaking point, basically, when you start to get into maybe about 60 seconds uh, per arc, you've kind of pushed it a little too hard, and you're starting to sacrifice some plan quality. But for the higher values, there's really no difference uh, in the plan quality. Um, so the, another parameter that you can specify in Pinnacle is this it says constrain leaf motion, and here we entered 0.5 centimeters per degree. So this is basically a parameter that's impacting how much the leaves are moving from one beam angle to the next. If you let the, the leaves move dramatically from one angle to the next, you're going to get more intensity modulation, but it's going to take more time to deliver. So this is, again, a similar kind of test that we ran to, to test this. You know, at some point here, as you go from you know, allowing one centimeter to five millimeters, three millimeters, one millimeter, if you're only going to allow one millimeter of motion per degree, you're kind of forcing it to basically like a, you know, a dynamic conformal arc therapy. Uh, versus, you know, true VMAT. And so you, that's where you start to see some loss here in plant quality. At some point, you've kind of pushed the system a little too hard. So in terms of smart arc, you know, what we found is that one arc is sufficient for simple cases, such as prostate, but two arcs are needed for more complex cases, such as head and neck. Uh, we typically set a delivery time of 90 seconds per arc. And we generally restrict the leaf motion to three millimeters uh, per degree of gantry rotation for prostate cases and four or five millimeters per degree for head and neck cases. And of course, these parameters are going to be different from one planning system to the next, but this just gives you an idea of the kind of uh, parameters that you might uh, be playing with when you do VMAP planning. So just to summarize, uh, since 2008, VMAP has become a widely adopted IMRT delivery technique. Uh, VMAP combines highly efficient delivery. It's generally less than two minutes per arc with highly conformal dose distributions. And VMAT is a complex delivery technique requiring a thorough commissioning process. Thank you very much.